Next, what's, what's uh, our next we're ending? Gonna, we're ready for the pink ending now. The, the pink, pink ending. You mean like the color? Well, yeah, this is the one that answers, I think, the most basic question you could ask in a show like this. This asks, when did endings begin? It's a serious question. That's a weird one. When did endings begin? Wouldn't there always, a, I mean, the moment you had beginnings, wouldn't that then imply an end? Because the beginnings have to do something. End. You'd think so. But if you think hard about the origin of the universe, I would propose that when the universe began, which by some interpretation was a huge explosion of energy, which then condensed and cooled into matter, that that whole event came in without any notion of endings at all. Huh. Yeah. Um, so when you get matter, when you get that condensation, you get a list of elements, which we can now turn to in the periodic table of elements with which you are, I'm sure, very familiar and enjoy every evening before dining or sleeping. <laughs> so if we, if we look at this, at this chart, and we start up in the upper left-hand side with hydrogen, and we move through it to helium and lithium and beryllium and boron and carbon and on and on, as we move through the list, I can tell you that every one of the first 82 elements on this chart, with two exceptions, which I'll mention in a minute, uh, every one of these has a version of itself that goes on forever and ever and ever until the end of time. So every one of these ones we're seeing right here that are colored in, every one of these is immortal? Is that what you're saying? Mm, yeah, well, I guess you could call it immortal. I mean, you choose any one. Uh, choose gold, for example. Ooh, look at you. Could you do that? Well, so this is a gold atom. It was spurt out of a star, right? Okay. And it will keep company with other atoms from time to time, but basically it will go on till the end of time, or there's a version of it that will. Wow. Now, uh, what I would tell you is that when you go back to the chart to the end of our little group there, to the first one on the next in the black called B or bismuth, bismuth, I would argue, is where the universe invented endings. And what is bismuth? It's a gas? No, no, it's a rock. It's a shiny, beautiful black rock, actually. And yeah. you're saying this shiny, beautiful rock is the beginning of death? Yes. Yes, I would say that. That's a fair approach. Why would that be? Well, because all the atoms at the bottom of this chart are a little heavier than the ones at the top, meaning they have more neutrons and protons than the early. Like, for example, look here is our version of bismuth. It has lots and lots of, of neutrons and protons. And there's so many of them, as you can see, they're having a little trouble holding their, themselves together. They do look a little... Uh... Tense. Uh, or maybe, it, maybe it's chemically unstable, is what you might call them. Okay. French scientists studying this atom recently determined that inevitably, inevitably, something will happen to this atom. It goes something like this. Whoa. I <laughs> you timed that we, so well. I know, it's we Do that again, do that again. Okay, I don't know if I can do it twice. <laughs> well, no, you don't add sound effects. I can do the sound effects and you do the... Okay. One more time. Oh, now you're like going on strike? No, well, the you point. You made him angry. <laughs> Stop it. All right. The, the point I'm trying to make, Keith, is that this atom, when it loses protons, it loses its identity. When an atom decays, it, this atom is no longer bismuth if it doesn't have the right number of protons. That's the way chemistry works. So you're works. saying like as it, as it sheds its protons and neutrons, it's dying. It's That's right. Now here's the cool thing. When we go back to the chart, to number 83, every element after it, po, at, run, fur, ra, rif, dib, sig, bu, s, mit, dis, and rig, also decay. So all these yellow ones are, are, all, are, are the dyers, and the other ones we met earlier, those are the stayers? That's correct. That's correct. But with, the, with the two exceptions I mentioned, I should say, 43 and 61, that's technetium and promethium. Nobody really likes those two. Um, they're, they've decayed from early mm -hmm. to kind of mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, I don't much care for them. Okay. I find them actually unnecessary. I tell you what, if they if they mess up the whole logic here, let's they just do. let's just get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Get out, get them out of here. All right, but the weird irony is. Oh, let me just say, when we've divided up like this, now you can see that bismuth is at the dividing line maybe of the universe, because this is like, this is where you see, it's like the KT boundary with the dinosaurs. This is a, this is but a- But for the, everything. For everything. Huh. But the cute, cool thing is bismuth is pretty good for you. Really? Like people swallow little bits of bismuth every time they get tummy aches. They do this all the time. You recognize this color, maybe? Yeah, the pink I mentioned? Yeah, huh? Do you recognize the product associated with this color? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pepto B. Well, you don't say B. Say the whole first syllable Pepto. of the second word. Biz? Biz. 
bismuth. Why? What do you mean, why? Because you, you bis- saying are you saying that bismuth? You're saying that bismol is for bismuth? No, I'm saying bismuth is in bismol. There's no, little, man, there's little I, black I rocks in there. There are. No, I don't. I I, uh, I I I'm not sure about that. Well, what do you think? Well, I think that bis- if I had to guess. I would say Bismol is just the guy's name, like the guy who invented Pepto-Bismol. Like that guy, Fred Bismol. No, that, name. that guy seems to have a toothache. He's in the wrong ad. I don't know how... No, and, and you, what did you tell me earlier? That it's a black rock? Yeah, yeah. It's a pink liquid. No, it, it, there are black rocks in that pink liquid. You don't believe me, do no, you? I oh, don't. Well, can I just prove this to you? Yeah, prove Let it. Let me prove it to you prove right it. now. Whoa. Hi. Would you? Yeah, it's, it's me, Robert, again. I am, we're, Gail, where am I? Are we? You're at the Berkeley Carroll High School in Brooklyn, New York. And we're in a real, fully equipped chemistry lab, and Gail's going to show us what you claim not to believe. That's right? right. So how do we start? With this. Oh, yeah. We take 11 tablets of pepto B. that's 9, 10, 11, put them into a bowl, we pound. Next, we measure out some water and add hydrochloric acid, even though it's corrosive to body tissue. Now add powder, stir, stand back. Oh boy. And now we put in a little strip of aluminum foil. What's gonna happen is the aluminum is gonna dissolve into the acid and chemically, it'll spit the bismuth out. Now Jad, prepare to be astounded. They're gonna watch little bits of rock falling out of the liquid. That's bismuth. And here's an even better shot, courtesy of photographer Melanie Hoff. Wow. Jed, look, you can't deny scientific fact that hiding inside every single Pepto-Bismol tablet is pure, street-level grade, crystal bismuth. <laughs> that's that's yeah, bismuth. Yeah. Robert, show, show them in the bismuth. So that Robert wants me to show you. See these shiny black rocks? These, came, these precipitated out of a bottle of Pepto B, wow. isn't no it? Kidding. And if you want to see the atom in, in grand magnification, just look up. That's it looks a little bit like a Mayan temple on hallucinogens, but that's what bismuth is. <laughs> it's cool looking. It, it is. If you but if you let's go back to the to the periodic table one last time, because here's the best thing about bismuth, really. It lives in a very poisonous to people neighborhood. Like, Keith, could you just go find bismuth again? It's 83 on the, yeah. Mm, yeah. Now we'll go next door to Pub. Pub is lead. You don't give lead to a three-year-old and say suck on this, right? No, because they get definitely not. Right. That's a poison. You go next door to 81. That's thallium. The CIA decided to sprinkle thallium on Fidel Castro's beard, knowing that it's a defoliator, so it would make his beard fall off, thereby taking his machismo and basically <laughs> causing a revolution. They were hoping for a revolution from thallium. It did it work? It was a good plan. The execution was a little rough. They couldn't get the thallium on the beer. Huh. But if you go over to the right, past B to Po, go to Po, yeah, polonium. The Russians didn't like a guy at all. He was having sushi in London one day. They sprinkled the polonium on the sushi. He ate the sushi and he died. That's, it's that poisonous. No kidding. Yeah. What, so this is a treacherous little neighborhood it, right here. Very treacherous. I mean, you got, starting with thallium, you got poison, poison, Pepto B poison. Right. <laughs> and in the middle of a poisonous neighborhood, you have an element that cures tummy aches. I mean, and really. apparently introduces death to the universe. Exactly. It's the best element ever. It's really, I think we should have a toast to bismuth. Let's have a toast.